What's going on, everyone? So Dwight Howard has been in the headlines a lot lately for numerous reasons. Uh, he just came off of his stint in Taiwan where he was really good, but, like, how much can you put into, you know, playing against the talent that he was playing in in Taiwan? But it looks like he is very likely not going to return. Um, there was last I heard, which was back in June, um, that the that the team that he was on offered him like a new contract and he was really upset about that, uh, that they like gave him a, uh, like a 65% decrease from the previous salary. Uh, so he wasn't very happy about that. And now it kind of seems like Dwight Howard is kind of trying to push to get back to the Lakers, right? He's talked several times about how he could have helped against Jokic, uh, you know, and talked about, you know, that 2020 team, it's no secret that, look, he, he's got this like love-hate relationship with the Lakers and seems to, you know, always go back to the Lakers. And Dwight Howard said this himself. He compared the Lakers to that ex-girlfriend and like a toxic relationship. So here's what Dwight Howard had to say. It's been crazy, but it's just for some reason we just clicked. You done tried other girlfriends, but it's just some type of connection y'all got. That's how we feel about the Lakers. Man, it's just something that we got this connection. I don't know. I got to work. I got to work. Dwight Howard on relating the Lakers to that of an ex-girlfriend who someone kept coming back to. So, Dwight Howard and uh, and, and uh, his uh, usual way, <laughs> he, he talks about the Lakers and, you know, a potential return. And look. A lot of people in Lakers Nation would love to have Dwight Howard back, right? Whenever I talk about the setter position or the Lakers need another big, a good majority of you are like, go get Dwight Howard, bring Dwight Howard back, pay Dwight Howard. And I don't doubt Dwight Howard would be willing to come back. Dwight Howard said himself he wanted to come back, but the Lakers didn't want to give him a multi-year deal, that he wanted several years. He didn't want just a one-year vet minimum deal. Now, could the Lakers maybe say, hey, we'll give you a vet, like a two-year vet minimum type thing, you know, and maybe he comes back? I mean, he was a big part of the 2020 team, right? He was a huge reason that the Lakers won. Problem is, that was several years ago now, and he's not the same player that he was in 2020. And... The last stint that he had, because remember, he was on the 2020 left, came back again for the third time, and that became a disaster with him having issues in the locker room. His play was nowhere near where we needed it to be, and he was actually solid for what, who was it, the Sixers? I believe he was a backup for, he actually had a pretty good year in that backup role for the Sixers, and then he came to Lakers and just was terrible, and at times literally unplayable and a locker room problem, and fighting with Anthony Davis on the bench, right? Now, how much can you put into that? Like, you know, would Anthony Davis hold a grudge to that? Would the Lakers hold a grudge to that? Probably not, because there were the reports that, again, the Lakers made, or according to White Howard, that the Lakers made him an offer, but they didn't want to give him a multi-year deal, which was probably because of how that year went. They probably looked at it as like, dude, you were fighting Anthony Davis on the bench. You were causing problems. It was just a mess and a disaster. We're trying to give you a chance, but we want to prove a deal, right? That could have very well been the case. But I absolutely believe that the Lakers tell him, hey, we'll give you a vet minimum deal. I think Dwight Howard comes back. Like that toxic relationship and that ex-girlfriend that you just can't let go of, right? Like, I mean, Dwight Howard has what, like 15 kids or something like that? So... I mean, it's just kind of funny that that's his analogy, but you know, regardless, it's it's one of those things that like he d look he makes sense. I get it, and I've been in the the camp of like I really want the Lakers to get a veteran big, somebody that understands. Because if you're gonna get and bring in that veteran big, you got Anthony Davis, you got Hayes, right? It would be nice if they even if they go get like a Christian Wood or something like that. Bringing in a veteran big that is beefier, bulkier, that can kind of be a specialist for the Jokic matchup, for the Joel Embiid matchup, you know, for the, the Valanchunas matchup, or, you know, you're playing the Grizzlies and they got Steven Adams or something like that, right? Like those type of matchups, the big, burly type centers. 
I'd really like the Lakers to have that. And also a guy that's been there and done that. Game seven, three minutes left, you know, you're playing Denver. Would you rather trust a, a veteran guy like a DeMarcus Cousins, a Dwight Howard or something like that, a guy that's been there, done that? Or would you rather trust a, a 23-year-old Jackson Hayes, you know, or a undersized Christian Wood or things like that? Like those, that's one of the reasons I kind of want a veteran guy. I don't absolutely hate the idea of Dwight Howard. I just would rather have other options, right? And one of the things that Rob Polinka has talked about is that, like, he wants versatility amongst his bigs, right? He's talked about how, like, they want to play Anthony Davis at the four again and kind of go back to that 2020 model, right? Which, in that case, Dwight Howard makes a lot of sense, right? He makes a world of sense, especially as, like, that third big. But Rob Polinka wants a center that can kind of stretch the floor more. That That is, like, they look at Jackson Hayes as kind of like the JaVale McGee, the Dwight Howard type player. They want somebody that's a little different and brings a different skill set, which is why a guy like Christian Wood makes a world of sense. So, now, again, if you can get him still and then still bring in Dwight Howard, why not? Right? Like, if you could kind of do both, why not do both? Right, it doesn't hurt. You could bring Dwight in on like a non guaranteed deal or something like that. Um, plus, I think Dwight would understand what the deal is. Right, like, look, you're coming in. You're gonna have nights where you're you're not gonna play. You're gonna have nights where you're gonna play heavy. You're gonna have nights where it's just it, you get DMPs. You're gonna have nights where you start maybe right because Anthony Davis is out and. You know, Jackson Hayes is a little banged up or something, right? That could be a real possibility. I do think Dwight Howard would come in and accept that role, right? I mean, one, he was just he was just out of the league, right? So it's like, you know, what would you rather do? Would you rather go back to playing in Taiwan for 65% less than last year's contract? Or would you rather come back to the Lakers where you love the Lakers, it's your home, it's your toxic ex-girlfriend, and you know, you're, you're, you're contending for another championship, right? The Lakers aren't rebuilding. Like, they're trying to go for it here. They have the roster. They have the depth. And they and if we're being honest, they could use a guy like Dwight Howard. Again, I'm not big on Dwight Howard. Like, I would still, I'm still in the camp of, like, going and getting, like, a Hassan Whiteside or something like that. I know some people want younger, right? They, they want, a, you know, a, like, another guy like Jackson Hayes, right? They, they love the idea of that or bringing in a Colin Castleton or whomever, right? Which I don't mind, right? Like, let's, let's say we can't get um, Christian Wood. Like, I wouldn't mind them bringing in Colin Castleton and then bringing in Dwight Howard. But I we already have our project big in Jackson Hayes. Again, the regular season, I'm not worried about the regular season, right? Like, the regular season's 82 games. You could pretty much do whatever. Right, like so, Jackson Hayes will be fine. Anthony Davis, you play at the five at times. Um, you know, like let's say you do bring in Colin Castleton, that's fine. You can play him over the course of eighty-two games. Like it's good. I I'm okay with that. My thing and my concern is when you get to the playoffs and you got those matchups. You know, we we play the Grizzlies again, and this time they do have Stephen Adams. They do have Brandon Clark. They do have guys that can be more physical in Bain. Right. Does that look like a different outcome? You know, we go and we play the Denver Nuggets inevitably again. And it's like, okay, like we 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 need somebody that can wear down and just be physical with Jokic without just getting bodied, right? Dwight Howard would be a guy like that. That's kind of why I lean to like a Hassan Whiteside, a DeMarcus Cousins, a Dwight Howard. That's the case. The only reason I I'm not as high on Dwight Howard is one, his age. And two, he like he's kind of just one dimension. At least Demarcus Cousins, he can provide a lot of the same benefits that Dwight does. But he also could spread the floor, shoot the ball. He's a better passer. Like he, I think that he would fit in nicely. But there's also like locker room concerns with him and how does he, you know, approach the game and whatnot. Although he's slimmed down and looks good um, where he's playing. So right, but. If Dwight Howard wants to come back and he's willing to buy in, he's willing to play the role, 
and he's willing to kind of just be a mentor, especially for like Jackson. Because look, Dwight Howard is still an all-time great center. He's still was at one point one of the best players in the NBA. At one point, he was the best center in the NBA. This is a guy that was a number one on a championship contending team that ironically lost to the Lakers, uh, right? Like, it's this is a guy that has a lot of value for a, a guy like a Jackson Hayes, who is a young, kind of one-dimensional type center that you, you, you could have Dwight Howard kind of work with and kind of help mold. And So I, I don't hate the idea of Dwight Howard coming to Lakers. I just think, it, to me, it's kind of like, if that's your last option, you know, like, sure. But I do want a veteran. I do want a veteran. I, I just want another veteran, period, right? If you got, like, let's say we lock up the center position, right? Like, I think people underestimate how valuable Jared Dudley was. Dwight Howard in that 2020 year was. Rajon Rondo was, right? You had all these vet. I mean, even Jason Kidd on the sideline, right? Like, all of these guys were very important for the Kyle Kuzmas, the Alex Caruso's of the world, right? The KCPs, right? Like, because these were guys that had been there, had done that, had had the experience, you know, had played in finals, had, you know, gone on deep playoff runs, right? Like, could be vocal leaders and could and could kind of relate to the players and be an extension of the coach. So, I, I really do like the idea of a veteran guy, especially with the Lakers. We're such a young team, right? LeBron James is the one old guy, and then outside of LeBron, that's it. I mean, Anthony Davis is next in line, and he's 30. So it's like, we're a very young team. It would be nice to kind of have a couple veterans, and I like the idea of like that veteran center that can kind of just come in and be the specialist. So if Dwight wants to be that guy, and it makes sense, sure, why not? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. How do you feel? Would you want Dwight back? Would you not? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. Let me know.